Hello and welcome to the stream. My name is Yannick. I'm the French guy from Switzerland and I'm going to put my mic in in the right position. Hello, welcome. Um, this is my stream where I discover and learn Flutter. And uh, this is by part five. Uh, I've already done um, previous parts where I started a little application that uh, happens to be called Expense 42 because, uh, well, it uh, will help me uh, and many, anyone who uses it to manage expenses between two parties, two participants. Um, nothing fancy, so just two people. Uh, you buy something for them, they buy something for you, uh, or you buy something for both, and you split 50-50. So really, really simple. Uh, we will add complexity uh, in in the app afterwards. Um, I want. I just want to have the uh, possibility to uh, possibility to have uh, different currencies uh, right now because uh, I need to have uh, Swiss francs and euros. But uh, that's uh, pretty much uh, everything that um, I want to put in this uh, in this app as uh, as uh, features uh, advanced features. So, where were we last time? Let's have a look at our beautiful application. Uh, here it is. So this is uh, a phone, a live phone, a uh, real phone that is plugged into uh, my computer via USB and in uh, and is casting its screen to a Chromecast. Uh, that is, it's, uh, it's plugged into an HDMI uh, capture card. So. Uh, it's it's already running. This is Visual Studio Code, and the app is running. So that's the the, the screen we get when we start the app, and we can see we have uh, already a few things. We have um, a list of expenses, the price, and who paid for that. And if we press on one of those, we arrive um, on a form, which is not very advanced because we had to stop. Um, the stream last time, but go check that out to see how we came here. And uh, well, hopefully, I'm gonna have a much better form at the end of this stream. You can also press the plus button uh, at the bottom of the screen, and we get the same form, but it's empty to create a new expense. So uh, let's have a look at the code, and let's see. Don't don't. Thank you, uh, phone. Uh, let's have a look at the code. There are a few things I want to change. Um, maybe some, maybe do some refactoring or, uh, already. We will see. Uh, well, I don't think I need those comments anymore. Those came with the default app. Uh, so we now know what we are doing. Uh, pretty much. Uh, okay. So this is our home screen. Uh, what are we going to do in there? Uh, we don't need the counters. That also came with the uh, default app. Uh, well, let's uh, let's make it that when we press on a an expense, then we can have uh, both participants up there. Right. Let's try and do that. Um, so scaffold, that's our list view, and that, those are the cards that uh, that we can see um, here in the the, the 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 with the expense there. That's a card. Then there's a list style, and then when we tap on that, we push uh, a context a root root <coughs> a root, and uh, that's the edit one. That's the edit root, and we. We pass the e current expense. All right. Uh -uh. Why is it red? What did I? Oh, I broke that because counter no longer exists. So let's do that. Yes. Uh, main in in the main we said that the slash edit root was the expense form. So there we go. We have our formula, our form, and uh, then the form has a padding. So that's the uh, 
the padding you see on the left or right and it's also there top and bottom because we've used this edge, edge inset dot all so that's 20 pixels um left right top bottom uh inside we've got a column and we've aligned everything to the start of the column let's see um, i'm on the wrong screen yes so let's see uh we've got then the children of the column so that would be our widgets and we've got lots of fields stuff i previously used this the decoration and that's when i if i press uh in the field in the participant field then it's going to move there we go and i'm ready to type um i don't i, I there's something that i don't i don't like um on, on this thing so i'm going to change that i'm going to put the text back uh, because I, I actually i want radio boxes so radio boxes don't have decorators so let's do that so we're going to have a text participant which is not going to be paid by and not participant because that's what we're doing here and a style which is going to be a text style and we're going to put the letter spacing at two okay comma here we can remove this comment here and then this text form field here too okay there's something wrong one extra uh, parenthesis and then if we save that it's going to reload hopefully and there we go we've got bed by now we need radio radio buttons and i want two radio buttons and i want them side by side because the text is gonna be just the name of the person or even you know me and them uh, to begin with so what we want i believe is a row i believe that's what we want and that row is gonna have two children which are going to be radio radio button input element i th think uh, or maybe not uh, let's see what uh, our friend google knows about that flutter radio form field And they are using a. They are using a. We don't know because it's not working. But they were using a radio. A string character, with value group value unchanged. Right. So if I remember correctly, group value is going to be the variable or field that contains the value we want so them and me for example for for my uh, my case hello monica good evening how are you since i last talked to you <laughs> or write wrote to you <laughs> we were on the slim devops uh, stream earlier uh yes so group value will be the variable where i stored the, the value value uh, uh which is not very uh uh logical because value is the 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 value of that uh, radio box and not the value of the variable and then unchanged will be called when it, when i click on the button good you're good monica great Great, it's uh, nice to have you in the chat. Um, I believe you know what I'm doing, so I'm not gonna go over that again, but in case you want me to recap, I can do that. Uh, okay, so I want a radio then. That's what I want, apparently. So let's go here. It's not a radio button input element thingy. It's just a good old radio. Okay. Um, probably doesn't know where it comes from so let's auto import that mm. that's not the problem what's the problem is the name unchanged oh unchanged is required yes of course so let's let's have a an empty and 
handler. And it takes a... It takes what? A... Oh, it takes something, but it doesn't know what. So that's where I have to do a radio of string, I believe. Or uh, maybe not. Maybe not. Or... Yes, the parameter, the name parameter group value is required. Okay, and this now should take a string. Yes. So that's going to be value, right? Okay. And it said that group value is mandatory. Okay. I then need a variable to store that value. So var um, paid by equals um, not var I think it's a string it doesn't like that yes it does it said it says it's not used so the group value is paid by okay now unchange I'm going to do a set state and that doesn't work, of course. Of course it doesn't work. Why would it work? <laughs> Why would it work the first time? Uh, let's see, something is missing. A value is required. Yes, of course, value. And the value of this one will be me. Okay, and now can I do my set state? Can I do set state? The method season isn't defined for type expense form. I'm doing something wrong, but I don't know what. Let's have a look at the documentation. Let's read the manual. Uh, here we have... It's a, it's a state. State is... State is in the widget state, so why can't I use a set state? I am... I am... I am in a stateless widget. That's why I can't do set state. So let's have a, a look at the power of the Visual Studio language extension. We are going to do a refactor, which is this uh, word in French. And we're going to convert to stateful widget. And just like that, we now have a stateful widget that we can use in this uh, in this formula, in this form. So let's now do set state. And set state takes a function. And that function will say that... Uh, what, what will it say? It say that paid by equals value. Right. And now the phone will update or should update or uh, mm, mm, will maybe update. No, because there's an error. Uh, I don't need that HTML. And I actually don't need. Oh, there we go. Here's our, uh, our radio button. Doesn't do anything, but hmm, weird. Let's move on and add the second one. Uh, we need another one here, which is going to be another radio thingy, but then that's going to be them. Okay. And then paid by, and then unchange values. It's still been by. I think that's what I'm supposed to do. Let's see. Yes, that's what I'm supposed to do. Character equals value, and then group value character, and value is something that. Uh, that looks about right for me. Uh, but I only have the radio button, I don't have the text. Well, I'm going to do that later now there is something weird because when i press that it doesn't do anything desktop in dava next week is all about flutter says monica in the chat well i'm gonna have to have a look at that i also volunteered to help write the new 
well, the, the new A, uh, A settings uh, app uh, for Ubuntu. Uh, there was a call for um, a call for volunteers on the Ubuntu discourse, uh, and so there's a the settings app that is um, re be re being written in Flutter. I don't think it's an official thing, although it might be. But um, it's always uh, it's always gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun to do to do some Flutter. All right, so we do have two radio boxes, but none of them is actually working. Uh, let's do what we do when we don't know what's going on. We print tons of stuff and then we figure out where the problem is. So let's do that. It has been reloaded and if I click there, it says them and there it says me. Okay, them and me. Then why... Why is that radio box not working as expected? I don't even know why this one is not working. Oh, there we go. So this one is working. How? How? Oh, I know. Well, I think I know. I'm going to stop the app and restart the app because I went from stateful, stateless to stateful and maybe the hot reload didn't like that. So say hello to my lovely daughter. And Visual Studio Code is rebuilding the app. And we shall see the app on the phone in a few seconds. Let's see. Here it comes. Uh, let's click on that. And nope. I am disappointed because I did rehearse that and it did work. So what is wrong? So I do set state and I... Oh! Is it because... Uh, it's probably because I may I put this variable not where it's supposed to be. I believe. Let's have a look. Ta-da! Uh, there we go. Okay, so a few things to fix. We need to add some text. So after this radio, we need a text, which is going to be uh, me. Uh, and that's it. And then after this radio, we need another text. And that's going to be them. Okay. Uh, and if we reload that, it it's almost working. It almost work. Uh, I want this those things to be aligned a little bit more than that. I want them to be in the middle of the screen. Um, uh, I don't remember what I'm supposed to use to do that. So flutter uh, align uh, components align row S same width something like that call an align item to have the same width yes uh, column cross -ax cross axis alignment stretch no that's that is not what I want that is not what I want hello Agdir how are you welcome to the stream uh, that's not what I'm looking for. Set row width in Flutter. I don't want to set the row width. I want to have two... Oh, there. That's what I used last time, I think. That's expanded. Uh, row throws this over. This is interesting because Flutter threads overflow on row and columns as layout error. Make the children smaller or dynamically sized and your error will go away. If you want to force the children to be dynamically sized, surround them with expanded. 
Yes, that's what I want. We can also change the row to wrap, which will cause the children to automatically move down a row if they overflow the horizontal size. No, I want that, I think. I think I remember that's what I want. So, what do we have? We have a row and we have children and those children, uh, I, I want those to be inside some kind of container and those inside of some kind of container too. And there they said expand. Yes, expand is a children of row. Okay, let's do that. I am fine, thank you. I am uh, con uh, keeping keeping coding. That's not that's not English. I keep coding. Ah, it's late. I am still coding this app, um, and uh, hopefully by the end of this stream we're gonna have a working form. So we want an expanded here, and the child will be. Oh, so that's only one child, so we want a container. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure we want a container. Container. And container. Oh, container only has one child. Hmm, that's not what I want then. Then I want a another row. I want a row of two with two children. And the children will be those. I think. Let's see. Uh, and then... Uh, no, that's... Yes, so that's the row. And that's the child. Yes, that's the child of the expanded. Then I want another expanded. Expanded. Nope, not the next expanded yes and the child will be another row and the children of that row will be this and here I go uh yes I could have I probably should learn how to use the Visual Studio extensions because it apparently saves a lot of time. <laughs> so those are the children. That's, that's the row. That's the row. And that's the children. Oh, I missed something. A row and a text. A row and a text. The text. And then that's the end of that. And then that's the end of this row. And then that's the end of this expanded. And then we have another expanded. Uh, da, 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 da. I, I messed up again. Uh, this yellow one is the end of the radio. Then this is the end of the text. Then this is the end of the children. This is the end of the row. This is the end of the expanded. This is the end of the children. Yes. Okay. Uh, there we go. Yes, I really should learn to. Yes, to to use that extensions. Let's add a few commas as suggested by the the Flutter team that you, know, you should put comma everywhere and there we have it. Yes, me and them properly aligned. That's awesome. Now, when I click on milk, uh, because I'm editing this thing, it should preset, pre fill me. How do we do that? Well, we are going to have to. Huh. That that's actually a good, a great, uh, great question. Because how will I get the value of? whatever has been sent to me uh, through through here so the arguments here i will get the arguments from here but then 
I only need I need to initialize something only the first time because whenever I'm going to set state here, it's going to call build again. And I don't want to reset the value. Otherwise it's not gonna work. Yes, 47 and 61. Thank you. Thank you. So yes, I need to find a way to initialize th uh, the value I'm going, uh, which is actually this one, paid by. I only want to initialize that once. So, I don't know what's, what the best practice here is, is, but I could, oops, I could have a boolean that says initialized or, or not. I guess. Because I can't use, I can't get, yeah, I need the context to get to the expense that has been passed in as a parameter. So I can't do that outside of build. So let's do something like bool initialized equals false. Is it false? Uh, what is it in? It's uh, underscore. You can separate each bracket, comma, parenthesis, by a comma to have a good indentation. Uh, do you mean I forgot some commas again? Well, I don't know if your English is correct, but I understood you, so maybe both our English is <laughs> wrong. <laughs> you know, with both of us busy French-speaking guys. I uh, believe I have commas everywhere. Line 48, did I forget the line? I have a... Oh, here, you mean. Okay. So I can do that. That's what you say? Oh, wow. All right. Yes, thanks. Thanks. Let's, let's indeed learn Flutter together. Oh, I see. So it's it's actually uses the the end. So if I put one here, and then it's going to. Oh, I see. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I think I got them all. Yes, and everything with the comma or semicolon. I guess it's the same. Uh, I think I got everything. Wow, that's uh, that's amazing. Thank you. Uh, so where was I? Yes, I wanted to initialize this uh, thing. So let's say it's not initialized yet. So we can do if not initialized. And actually, uh, this, what does it say? It says expecting... Define semicolon. There we go. And actually, this could be a private variable. And if we are not initialized, then we're going to do this. And we're going to do uh, paid by equals expense dot participant because it's badly named. But now it says. Uh-uh, you can't automatically access because the receiver can be nil. Try making the access conditional using... Uh, it can be nil in indeed. So this needs to be like what? That? No. I, 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 One day I will understand what it means. Oh, expense can be nil. Okay, that's expense can be nil. Uh, so yeah, so if not initialized and expense... then it automatically uh, goes through the null check or null safe thingy. Uh, no, 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 no. And then initialize it. Okay, let's try that. So let's go back to the main screen. So if I click on cookies, well, tap on cookies, them is initialized. And then if I tap on me, on milk, me is initialized. That is working. And then if I tap on them, 
but nothing works because I haven't coded the uh, the the way back. But yeah, and if I click on plus, then nothing is selected, which is exactly what I want. So yeah, victory. Expense and um, question mark dot participant. Um, yes, because expense question mark participant will do nothing if expense is actually nil. So I guess it's the same thing. I I I would guess that it does a if that is nil do nothing else do that or get that. Oh, I see my time timers are are working. Stream, stream element is uh, indeed uh, doing stuff. All right, so that's okay. We I'm okay with paid by. All right, now I need the title, which uh, is also I I think badly named. Uh, it should be named something else, but eh, we'll do that later. Uh, okay, so that was that was that. And now I think, uh, how can I do this? So that's the children textile and then row children. I want this and I click on the fake click here and I want to extract widget and I want to make a radio Right, um, uh, paid by radio. Yes, that reference to non closing class method cannot be extracted. Ah, bummer. That was a nice try. Radio choice. Radio choice would have been a, g a good name if uh, the refactoring had worked, but it doesn't, and I don't know why. Ray, it's not the name, but uh, yeah, radio choice. Reference to an unclosing class method cannot be extracted. Extracted. I have no idea what's going on. Can we extract this one? Extract widget. And that's uh, me radio. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Well, maybe we can extract a local variable. Local variable will be great too. Where is it? Where is it gone? Oh, it, yeah, okay. So it's there. Uh, okay, and that's gonna be, if I press F2, that's radio choice. Not radio choice W. Okay. And well, then I don't know why it won't extract a widget, but why not? We already have uh, something better here. Okay, so we have the abba, we scaffold, we have the insets, and then the colon. And the colon has a text paid by and the radio choice. Now. We have a size box to breathe a little. I, I have a feeling 30 is a little bit too much. Let's try 15. What does 15 do? Yeah, it's, it's great. It's uh, still maybe a little bit big. Let's see. Five is good. Oh, but I'm, I have to recheck once I control K control U remove that and that's title and then what does that do yeah now it's a little bit too close why radio choice is so tall I have no idea because it has two expanded in uh, in it that's an expanded and a row two rows to have the the radio and the text next to each other. Uh, size box 815, that's okay. Now we need a text 
text form field, yes. Initial value. So initial value is not gonna work. Although, no, it's not gonna work. Because if I change that, well, I'm going to remove the decoration first. Okay. And then, oh, unless the initial value, uh, I don't know. Let's, let's click in there, in there. Okay, and say me, blah, blah, blah. But then if I change that. Huh, okay, so it doesn't... Oh! So maybe I don't need to do the, all the, this... Uh, all this thing... With... With that... I don't know. Uh, control K, Control C, Control K, Control C. If I just let that let it like that, okay. Go back. Milk will do me. I press them now because if I press them now, then it really initializes paid by each time. So I do need the. Uh, I do need the safeguard here. Yeah. Uh, why does it display title text and title label of input? Mm. Oh, because I had a... You mean in the title thing? Because I had a... I left... I had left the decoration here in the text field. So it did say title twice. Now it's gone. Right, okay, so now I have that, but I also have that. And that doesn't change even if I do that, so that's great. That's great. Uh, uh, so here I can put my newly acquired knowledge uh, at work. Okay, I can do that. And if I click plus, it doesn't crash, it's just empty. And if I go back there and click cookies, then it initializes with the cookies. Right. Awesome. Uh, let's another, add another size box here. And then let's see. Uh, that's the amount. Now I have a problem with the amount. Because... Uh, let's do something that is just going to be, uh, just, just a number. So I've got text form field. Okay. Uh, and that's going to be what uh, the initial value of this thing is going to be, uh, expense dot amount dot to string and okay and what if I put a comma in there oh oh okay so same thing here same thing here oh great uh okay not exactly what I want because if I have like 10 should really, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's okay. I'm thinking about, you know, formatting numbers, but then if I format the numbers and need to pass the number back from, I'm pretty sure, does that as a format, input formatters. Ah, What's, what goes in, in there? A list of text input formatter. Creates a form field that contains a text field when a controller is specified. Initial value must be null. If controller is null, then the text editing controller will be constructed automatically and its text will be initialized to initial value or the empty string. For document value, see text field class and new text field the constructor. Mm, what I want here is a text 
input formatter. Okay, what does that need? What does that need? If I control click in there. Uh, uh, it seems complex. Oh, okay. So we need to use something that extends this class. Uh, how about how about currency or something? Hmm. Single if digits only. Except it's not digits only. It's uh, it's um, it's a currency something. White list, black list, length limiting, length limiting, max length, um, max length. Do we have something like currency, maybe? No, we don't. Okay, let's forget about that for now. We don't need that just now. But what we do need is a keyboard type which is probably a keyboard typing. Nope. It's a text input type. All right. Text input type. Dot number. Uh, will number allow for comma? Yeah, go to the, the documentation. That's uh, what I should really do. But I'm lazy. Uh, okay. If I click that. Yes, so then I have that. And I have commas and points. And dash and spaces. So that's uh, kind of what I want. It's going to be okay for now. And so I can do that five and then I go there and change that and I validate and nothing happens, of course, because I don't, I don't bring the, the thing back. So let's uh, do that. Let's try and, and make those data go back where they come from. Uh, also, I believe we need a little more space between the title and the amount. So let's do 30. Let's do that. Yeah, I like it much better. Okay, right. Uh, we need to we need to uh, take into account those changes. Those changes. Uh, okay. Oh, I see now. I see. I see. I see. Here I initialize the paid by, but how will I send it back? Oh, I don't know. I do know. I know what, that I don't want this. Well, we have two options here. One is the live editing or something like that. Um, if you, uh, I mean, we edit this thing, and then when we click the radio box or change the text it changes automatically and then we go back and it's already there that's option number one that doesn't allow for a cancel button but that will that would solve my any problem from for for init um, to init the values But I also, that also won't fix my problem with the, the, the amount that the, this amount is a string right now, but I want to store that, uh, I want to store that somewhere else. On top, you say, what do you mean exactly? So on top. There's the milk here. I tap that and that opens the form. And uh, so uh, I could I could have two buttons here. I could add cancel and save. 
and do something on save. Like, for example, uh, send an, an, an object back that I'm going to use on the other screen to replace the... Uh, the thing. Or the paid by on tap. So what you mean is I click on cookie. Right now it's them. I tap me and it's it's changes. Oh, okay. Now what I I'm I'm not sure what what is uh what what is it I want. Do I want that? So I go there and then I click on tap and it changes in the that variable and then I change the text and it changes and then I go back and everything is changed. Or do I want to give the possibility to press OK and cancel. So, yeah. The, I think it would be easier to do the live edit thingy. So let's try that. Let's try the live edit thingy. And if that doesn't work for me, then I can always refactor everything. So here, we give the expense, so we we give that object in the argument. So we should be here. We should have that. Yeah, live edit is kind of dangerous because it, you don't have any cancel option. But then it's a lot easier here because I don't need that. Uh, I don't need that. Uh, I don't need that. I can say that the group value is uh, is expense dot uh, hmm if expense expense if expense equals equals null then expense equals expense and now I need an empty one uh, is F12 working? yes F12, F12 is working uh, Can I do something like this? No, because non-liberal instance field amount. Oh, yeah. Well, let's let's finish that. Uh, it's not nullable, so... That's my problem. That's the problem here. What? What's... Too many positional arguments. Okay. Oh. Local. Okay. But no, it doesn't... It doesn't like that. Non-nullable instance amount must be initialized. Try adding an initializer expression. Ah! Initialize your expression, uh, which is like uh, subject equals that. I, I think, and then I can remove that from here, and then it won't complain about subject anymore. Participant equals amount equals zero, and currency equals number format dot Currency local equals FCH. And then I can get rid of that, I believe. And now I have a constructor that that constructs an empty expense. Hee ha! Well, hee ha. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> okay. And um, it doesn't like that because it. Yes. Okay. So now I have that now that's uh, I have done that for nothing because here no it's not for nothing 
it's here that I need to pass a expense expense that empty. There we go. And so here it can actually never be empty. But it doesn't know that. Or maybe it does. Okay, and now we can do expense the participant. And when we set the state, we say expense that participant equals value. But now it doesn't like that because value is it value or is it participant that is string? Value is a string question mark, so value. Okay, let's do the same thing here. This is expense expense dot participant and when we get this, we said expense dot participant equals value exclamation mark. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to come back to that constructor in a few seconds. Now, uh, if expense equals equals null, null, so it cannot be null. But we can check something else, like if expense dot participant equals equals empty, then create expense equal uh, otherwise edit expense. And that that does not that is not necessary and that is not necessary either okay um so we've we did the radio choice now now the text form field i believe there's an unchange too and it probably needs a string so that's the value and we can do expense dot uh, subject equals value, but there's something missing. We need to call set state on that. So set state, and then that goes in there. Okay. I uh, I forgot something else. Uh, this. Okay. Uh, everything has a comma. No, this has, doesn't have a comma. Uh, but this doesn't need a comma. It's a function call. It's not a property. This needs a comma. Okay. Uh, and then we can do the same for... Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we can. We can. Uh, we can we can do that unchanged. Uh, it's gonna take a value. The value is gonna be a string, and then we're gonna call set state, set state, and we're going to do uh, expense, expense dot amount equals um, percent. How do I? Uh, Int dot pass ah it dot pass there we go it int dot pass value uh, okay I need a comma here just for the sake of putting it there it doesn't work because value can be null so we don't want value to be null no that's not what it says that's not what it says a value of type type int oh it's double it's a double double dot pass value All right so the constructor you can use alt plus arrows up and down to move lines so that and then alt up oh thank you thank you all right let's go back to this uh, constructor and there's something it doesn't like somewhere uh yeah i don't know what that is but probably something a leftover and i can remove that too Uh, and then, uh, I think I removed too many things. Oh, yes, I removed. There we go. Yes, 
Uh, and we don't need international, and we don't need that. And everything is fine now. So let's go back to that constructor for a moment. Oh, what's going on? Uh, which is, which was the constructor for uh, expense. All right, so that's a named constructor. I, I suppose you know what that is. It's, it's just a function that is uh, actually working as a constructor. And then because everything here is non-nullable, it needs to be either required as a positional, uh, as a... A, a, an argument, a named argument. If it's required, then the compiler knows that you're going to have to provide a value for that and it will assign the values to the, uh, the, 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 the code before it executes anything in the constructor's body. In this case, we don't have a body, so we just have a semicolon here. But if we want to do stuff like this, and actually I can do that, the those things are non-nullable, so they need to have a value before anything is is executed, uh, is interpreted or executed or compiled or whatever in the constructor's body. And the way to do that is to use a, an initialized expression. So what we do is we add a colon after the name of the constructor, and then we give every non-nullable field a value. Every non-nullable field that is not going to be a constructor parameter. So things that are not in here. I think I could do this uh, and then here required this dot participant. There we go. But now I have to give participant a value when I called um, when I call this constructor, which is obviously not what I want because I want to build it empty. So that's what I do. Okay, let's see if this uh, has worked. Press F5 and uh, rebuild everything. And we'll see if that works. You are welcome. We are sharing information, you know. That's why I do those streams because you guys can give me pointers and tips and hopefully I can give you some of my uh, discoveries. I've been uh, I've been reading uh, the documentation a little bit and, and trying stuff. Uh, as I said earlier, I don't know if you were already there, I have volunteered for a project. Uh, there was a call for volunteers on the Ubuntu discourse. Uh, someone is building the uh, settings app for Ubuntu uh, as a Flutter app and they have uh, already set up stuff so I'm learning I'm learning interesting uh, things and also I will have a look at the new installer for Ubuntu that is uh, written in Flutter too. All right so we have what do we have what are we going to change we're going to change those cookies I paid the cookies and they are actually chocolate chips cookies and because they have chocolate in them they are a lot more expensive they cost four uh oh uh oh all right that kind of didn't work let's hot reload the application and let's do that again, but not touch the amount. So they were paid by me and they are chocolate chips cookies. Okay, and if I go back, it didn't, oh, it didn't work because I'm guessing I didn't refresh the state. But if we hot reload the app, no, because on reload we've fix this ah, we we have a hard coded thingy here so we don't need increment counter anymore let's get rid of that we don't need those commands anymore okay and navigator name pushed 
And if my memory is right, I can do then and then. Then is a function future uh oh so that's gonna be then of expense and then we do get that and then that but that's not working because because that requires a an expense here no the body might complete normally causing null to be returned, but the return type is a potentially non nullable type. Uh, then, future, uh, then R future or R function object on value. So, return null. Ah, return, return null. I can't return null. Uh, how about I return the the thing that has been passed to me, but it's not working because what? Future or R function ah that gets an object. So return expense as expense. It seems to be happy. Now. 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 I know that I have... Maybe I, I can just call set state. Because it has already been modified. Unless, ah, unless it was a copy. Well, we'll see that. I'm going to be lazy. Huh, look at that. Look at that. So, those cookies. Chocolate chips cookies. We can put some caps in there chocolate chips and chips cookies i paid that and go back look at that chocolate chips cookies and i paid that uh, no they did oh it does work yeha victory okay amunt amunt that seems to be a tricky thing. Uh, Amund. The Amund is here. Okay. Because. Because in Switzerland. We don't. This is wrong. This is wrong. We don't use the comma. For the decimal point. We use a. A point, actually. So, but I don't. Actually, I'm going to get rid of the of that. So let's let's go to home screen and see if we can fix that uh, right now. So we don't need this. Control X. How does it display that? It says expense index currency dot format. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't like that. Uh, I want this currency thing to be a string and I want it to be the three letter ISO code for that. So let's go to expense and change that to be a string. Okay. Then the default currency will be CHF because why not? And now it doesn't like that. Expected a class member. Try placing this code inside a class. Okay. Uh, what did I do wrong with that? Was that wrong? Yes, that was wrong. It's either uh, curly brackets or nothing. 
and I don't have a body, so that's that's great. Okay, uh, where is this here? I don't know. And why is this on one line? Why is it? Why doesn't it? Uh, well, it doesn't want to. Okay, why not? If I had a uh, antibody. Yep. Okay. I I'm okay with that. Uh, ding, ding, ding. Right, so now it's going to be all red here because that's going to be CHF, that's going to be EUR, that's going to be CHF, and that's going to be EUR. Okay, that's for the, initi the um, hard-coded initial values. Here, I want the amount, but I want to format that in some way, and then I want the expenses of index dot currency which is a string right and number format is not a subtype of string yes and so what and so let's uh, hot restart See if that works better. Performing a hot res restart. Comma at the end. Hmm. You think? Comma at the end of the expense. Here. Da. Comma. Comma is the answer to all my problems. Thank you. <laughs> comma is the answer. All right. Uh, is it like crashed or something? It doesn't seem to be hot restarting anything. So let's try and kill that and run F5 again. Golden rule in Flutter. Yes. And uh, so it's not only for the language, you know, where you would uh, add a comma just to make sure you can copy and paste the previous line and it won't break your code. It's also for the editor, so that the editor knows what to do and and does everything right. Okay, so the app is restarting again and, and it's actually working so far. Yes, so one point, ah, uh, I have, okay, so I have numbers but they are not formatted as currency which i'm fine with the only thing is that i'm gonna have to find a way to format to two well I'm, I'm showing that with my mouse but you can't see that but uh, 1.2 should be 1.20 obviously and so if i go to cookies can i edit the price here so 2.40 2.40 40 doesn't crash that's uh that's the start. 12.40 and go back. And they are now 12.4 euros. Awesome. But the thing is, if I do a double comma, then we have an error. Okay. Okay. Um, how do we do that? Can we do, is there, can we do try, try, try something? Try. Yes, so try. Insert a snippet. Okay. So we're going to try and do that. And if that doesn't work, then we, we just do nothing. Which is uh, probably not that good of a practice. Two fixed two. Okay. Home screen. Let's do that right now. So, to fix, or is it a, a function to fix? Mm, doesn't seem to be uh, something that it likes. To string as fixed. To string as fixed too. 
Let's see that. Uh, why did I stop the app or did it crash? Or did I stop it because I'm stupid? Well, you don't know. I don't know either. Let's find out together. That's what a community stream is about. Well, if you have a friend, or if you have a, a, a actually a, like a half a dozen friends, uh, uh who may be interesting in the stream, don't hesitate to tell them I'm trying to get to affiliate. I will need to have. Uh, actually, I don't need much. I, well, I need a few more subscribers, uh, uh, followers, I mean, uh, but I also need an average of three person in the chat per stream uh, for, um, for the last, I think it's 30 days or something. So yeah, I'm, gonna I'm going to need to have a few more people in this chat while I do the streams. Um, it worked. Look at that. 1.20 CHF 2.40 EUR. So yeah, it did work. Yeeha! Firework! Bring the booze. <laughs> okay, okay, now that worked in this list. If I press lemon T and then I go there, it's back to 10.0. Is it a problem? I don't think it is a problem. Because, well, it, it could be that I could, I guess I could go in there and, and then the initial value would be not two string, but two string as fixed two. And then that will make the initial value have two zeros. I guess, yeah. But then I can, you know, select the whole thing and set five and then go back. Yeah, I can live with that. I can live with that. The no cancel or confirm button. No, I'm going to leave it like that for now. Because the way I, th I think if we're going to have a save and cancel button, what we, what we will need is from the home screen when we call the argument here we will have to clone this make another instance of that so we don't work and we don't change the element in the list here it's okay and by the way by the way we need to do something here when we come back from this here it's going to be okay because we build an empty one, an empty uh, thing. So we would have to clone this and then go to the form and the form that will would not change. We would, we would then need to remove the arrow from the text and then add two buttons. And then when we click on the cancel, we would return null, probably. And if we click on save, we would return the the instance. But you know what? I think we have our specs. I think we have our use case and our specs. We know what we have to do. Why don't we do it? Why don't we do it? You know, let's learn together and try and do something. All right, so we will need, yeah, ah, okay. Uh, so we will need to clone this before we call the edit route. But then when we come back, we're going to have to set the state of that. And we're going to have to uh, copy... Yeah, we're going to have to copy the values or maybe we can just change expenses of index and make that the object that we that we use when we come back. Yes, okay, so we need to clone this. Okay, I'm thinking a clone method. I'm thinking a clone method. 
So we would have a, I don't know if there's some void. Yes, void. Void, no, no. A clone method will return an expense. So a clone method will do that. And if you pass the function, what do you mean? If I pass the function, if I pass the function, which function? The clone function? Arguments. In arguments, so in home screen here, in argu arguments, I would pass a function. So expenses.index. Uh, arguments I expect an object. Expect an object. So I don't really understand your your uh, suggestion. I need to have this webcam turned around because every time I look at the chat, it looks like I'm looking somewhere else. But then when I look at my code on my f yeah, I need to. When I look at my code, I look like I'm looking in front. Right. Okay. Um, I'm going to clone this thing. So. Expense clone is going to build. Yeah, I'm, I'm not fix it, fix it on that. Um, expense clone. I'm going to do a var var clone equals expense that empty. Or no, why? Why? I don't need to need it to be empty. I want expense subject is going to be this subject. Participant is going to be this participant. Amount is going to be, oopsie, this amount, this with an S. And then the currency will be this currency. That's a pretty good clone, if I may say so myself. Uh, okay. Uh, and then return clone. And come. Alright. So I have a clone function that will clone a an expense and send it to uh, here. Okay. Now when I come back from this. I want to set state and what I want to do in the state I want to do to say that expenses of index equals expense as expense. So that's why I say you use expense as expense. It probably means I need to change that as object and I need to do the expense equals object as expense and then use expense here and then use expense here. Oh, no, no control A. I don't need control A. Okay. I don't need those anymore. I don't know if I'm a higher level. I just, I just look at that, the documentation, and then I, I spent a few hours looking at this app. So, well, let me know if there's something you want me to go over again. So what what I did here? Okay, I was using here expense as well here, in this function, which is then. Um, is the, the function that is going to be called when we come back from the form. So the form actually pops on top of the home screen in, in Flutter's stack of, of, um, uh, of, of screens. So that's the navigation. Um, so when we unpop, which is what I do here. Well, no, I don't do that. It's automatically done by for me by the arrow at the top here, 
next to the edit expense text that has been added by the navigator automatically because it's it noticed that I have a top bar here or nav bar and that this form has been pushed. So if we go to the home screen here, we push, we use the navigator and we push a, a root. So the edit root is pushed on top of the home screen. So the nav bar automatically adds this arrow. And when we press on this arrow, it calls uh, pop, I think it calls. And pop, what pop does, it removes the topmost screen uh, that is the one that is active and activate the one that was previously active so is it clear up to this point that we push screens on top of other screens and then we pop them um, either by calling navigator.pop or by using this um, arrow this automatic arrow and so when yes exactly like history.back in javascript Right, so now when we push a root on top of this window, the, this is the home screen, we push the root, then we can, we can add, we can chain a then function. And this then, uh, it's kind of, if you've done some uh, jQuery promises, I don't know if you've done, uh, if you've seen that, then you do a promise, which is you return an object that is going to run an asynchronous function and you can then chain a then function call and give it a callback. And the, the framework uh, jQuery in that instance will uh, call your your then callback. Um, oh, the... VS Code Snap is uh, getting updated. Uh, yeah, the, so the framework will call this function when we come back from this uh, this view, when we pop the, the view. So that means when we come back, we are going, we are given an object here. And that object we know because we told the framework here and because we uh, did because we did what uh, because we did uh, uh, because that's the one we passed yes so the framework knows that we passed uh, that argument here and that is what we're get, go, uh, getting back so arguments here was an, a clone of our expense, okay? And then when we come back, we get our object. Our object is our clone that has been modified by the other screen. And so what we had before, we had expense as expense, both time here. And if I use the same construct twice, it means I can... Uh, uh, refactor that and have a variable so that's what I did so the object we we get back from the edit form is an expense because that's what we passed here so we can safely cast that as expense have an expense here and then we set the state and we say okay the object that we cloned and that we sent we came it, it came back from there and we can now replace that original object by our clone that has been modified. But now I'm thinking if we press cancel, then we're gonna return. We're gonna have to uh, return something. We're gonna have to let it know. Oh, yes. That's that's where the navigator dot pop would be uh, useful. So we need to. I think we we were okay with this screen for now. When we arrive to uh, in the form, then we need to tell the uh, the here. There we go in the app bar. 
we need to tell it to not put the arrow. So that's this one automatically automatically imply leading false. What automatically imply leading means is exactly what we saw earlier, and it is that the app bar will, uh, if we if we have that to true, will realize that we pu we pushed a state, a screen on top of another one, and then it will add the arrow back. We don't want that, so we say automatically imply leading false. And if I click on cookies, uh, it didn't work. It didn't work. Maybe I need to hot reload that because we made some. It, it's a pretty significant change. And no. Okay. So stop and and run. Ah, show errors. Where are the errors? That's why it didn't. Oh, I have, uh, have a problem with my uh, my mouse uh, wheel. It it pastes stuff without me notice, noticing. Okay, so let's go back to in automatically imply leading false, and then run that again. F five. Yes. So probably it would have uh, it would have worked. Let's uh, see. So now we're gonna need some buttons. Uh, we're gonna need a row and we're gonna need two expanded buttons with padding or something to make it pretty. Something like that. All right, so now if I click on cookies, there we go. No more arrow, and that means no more way to come back from this form. So we're going to have to add two buttons somewhere after the text form field here. Okay, we already know that we want a row. So let's add a row. Okay, uh, what we know is that we're going to have two expanded. One of, uh, so the first expanded will have a padding. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to guess padding. Uh, two D's only. Okay, a padding. Let's not put any padding just there, and we're going to need a button. Is it a button or push button? Oh, raised, raised. Uh, so it's elevated now. Elevated button. Okay. Uh, does that have a text somewhere? No. So we need child. The child will be a text. And the text will be uh, cancel. And it doesn't like that because because padding requires padding, and elevated button requires uh, unpressed. Okay, no problem. There, there you go, unpressed. There's your. Empty handler and that requires padding. Padding is a edge inset geometry. Okay, so edge inset in, inset geometry. Uh, or is it just edge? Edge insets. Dots. Okay. I probably don't want all because all will add um, a space on the sides too. Wow, congrats Eric. No, uh, yeah. Well, fingers crossed, you know, 
to, to get affiliate, I, I, I need to raise the average of viewers, which will only be possible if I get more viewers and more followers. Or, yes, followers. Well, I don't know whatever it's called on Twitch. But I'm working on it, you know? The only way to get uh, followers is to actually stream. And so it's going to take the time that it's going to take. Yeah, thanks, Agdir. I'm... Uh, I don't know if there's a large community of French uh, or French-speaking people, because I can always switch from English to French, uh, you know, in those streams. Uh, as long as there's uh, enough English to keep the non-French-speaking people interested, and I, I guess if I do interesting streams, people will come too. <laughs> That's another point. French flutter in English language, yeah. French flutter, I can I can speak flutter. I can speak Python. Actually, I'm I'm doing some good progress on my Raspberry, um, Raspberry Pi Stream Deck uh, emulator. Well, not emulator, but uh, Stream Deck equivalent that I called the Streamberry. Uh, once once this flutter thing is advanced, I'm going to switch back to the Streamberry streams. I don't know, Monica, if you've seen on the Discord channel, I have made some progress on the Streamberry UI, which will be used to configure the Streamberry. Is harder, what do you mean? Is Python harder than Flutter? I don't know. I find it easy, but that's uh, because I've been doing Python for longer than Flutter. But I actually like Flutter. Flutter doesn't seem to be that hard. Um, maybe it's because it's kind of HTML, kind of, uh, you know, those... Eh, it's In the end, they're all pretty much the same, right? It's the way... It's not the language itself. I mean, they could have done... They probably could have done pretty much the same thing with Python or Go or whatever. It's it's the way... the. the what you showed me tonight, the, the, the fact that you put commas in there and then the editor does magic, uh, that's that's one of the things that will help doing that, doing those things. And of course, all the, the libraries that are going to be present there. Uh, yes, there are there are some specificities in each language. In, in each, each language, of course. Um, all right, so I was thinking, you know, if I go all, uh, we're going to have a padding or an, an inset in every direction and I don't want to have spaces between the border of the screen and the button so I'm probably gonna have to do this left top right bottom and so for the first button for the first button I don't want any left padding so I want zero here uh, let's say I want zero zero oh not, not here not here uh, top, I want zero. Right, I want something. Uh, let's say, I don't know, 15. And bottom, I want zero. There we go. And do I have commas everywhere? So, oh, well, this is actually a case where I don't want that last comma to be in there. So let's remove it. But it's nice to have the choice. Horizontal, vertical, only, yes. Um, okay, so I have the insets, I have a text, I have a button, and that button doesn't do anything. And I want the exact same thing. So, Ctrl C, Ctrl V twice. But this one is going to be save. Is Eric streaming now, Monica? I thought it was a little bit uh, early for him to stream. Or did he got affiliate uh, yesterday during the stream? Oh, well, for, uh, after the stream yesterday. So uh, now we have two buttons. Let's see what that gives. Oh, Cancel is OK. Ah, the padding is going to be wrong. Now we need uh, left 15, um, left 15, top 0, right 0, 
Let's see. It's working. Yes. I need a size box. Sized box. Come on. I have a new keyboard. I bought a mechanical keyboard from one of my colleagues. And I still need to get used to it because there's extra keys on, on the left here. And so when I put my hand on the keyboard, my hand is uh, one colon short. And I always use those macros keys, macro keys instead of the control shift caps and tab keys. But I'm going to get used to that. No problem. Right. That seems about right. What do you think? So horizontal. So what you mean is I should use a horizontal something. Not expanded. Okay. Horizontal. Is that a... Is that a widget? The method horizontal is then defined. It doesn't seem to like it. Uh, I, I have to say I don't quite follow. <laughs> so no expanded, you said. All right. Oh, the row. Okay. I need a row. The row. Okay. Children. And then the children... Straight to the padding. Oh, I see. I uh, see. All right. I see. I see. So, uh, so the children of the rows are the buttons. No expanded. Nothing like that. Is that what you're saying? That. So X X and X X and then save, and then. Main axis alignment, okay, in the row here. Main axis alignment, space, uh, space between. So that's a main axis alignment, main axis alignment, space between. Let's see. Ta da! Yes, but the buttons need to be. Uh, so that's that's what that's. Uh, the size of the main axis creates a horizontal array of children. The main axis alignment, main axis size uh, must not be new. Okay. What does that use? It's a main axis size, main axis size. Mm, no. No. Uh, um. Huh. It is time to call our good friend Google. Okay, Flutter. Flutter. Row. Uh, item, same size. Make buttons in a row of the same width in Flutter. Well, but they're using expanded. They're using expanded. There are two ways. Expanded widget. It will divide space in equal parts. Get the width of the screen and divide it in two requests. Uh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to make calculations. I want it to be automatic. So expanded it is then. Unless there's something we're missing. Uh, expanded. It says expanded. Uh, table. Well, no. Table is like 1980s. A type of flex, yeah, some type of uh, some type of flex. But then they said expanded with flex, so I guess it's expanded then. Okay, uh, so now I think there's something like that here. Wrap with widget, and the widget is expanded. Same here. Wrap with 
widget and the widget is expanded. Oopsie, why do I control A because of this keyboard? Uh, yes, but then there's always this problem of because now it has space between, but but and uh, what what about uh, flex? Is it an integer? It is an integer, so I can I cannot say flex like point nine or something. Size box width. In the middle, in the middle of the of the expanded nodes. Let's try that. The size size box width uh fifty pixels. Oopsie. Tick, tick. Uh, 50. That should be enough of information. Yeah! Yes! Yes! That works. You say 20. Okay, let's try 20. 20 is good because because it's, it's yeah, yeah. 20 is good. Uh, what did I... What kind of... Yes, so it's 20 pixels. The the margin between the components and the, the border, the window is 20. So 20 inside here is okay. Which means I should probably make that a constant or something. Uh, like uh, here, I should do something like var... Uh, inset equals 20 and then I should use that here inset and then I should uh, also use that here so now if I want to hmm what's wrong the argument type in cannot be assigned to the parameter type double a uh, width is a double hmm okay and that took also a double. Right, okay, okay, okay. Don't be mad at me, I didn't know. So let's do that. And uh, it should fix itself. And now if I do like 50, I go crazy. Uh, nope, it doesn't work. Why? Why? Why I do I might have a problem somewhere. Or maybe it's again one of those things you need to restart the app because it's uh one of those things that I, you won't uh... see, see you later Monica. I have a feeling I'm going to be there for a while because I'm on a roll. I I I suddenly understand stuff. Uh, it does not work. There must be a an error somewhere. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, yes, I could change it. I have to read uh, on this material thingy because I know there's like rules that you would use that color and in, in the theme something that uh, might not be that I might not that I don't know right now so let's see if I click on the milk do we have like 50 pixels in the yes we do yes we do uh, so now if I put that back to 20 and save is it updating or is it not but it doesn't seem to be hot reload or hot restart actually but it doesn't restart it doesn't go back to the screen so let's implement oh yes it does All right and go back to milk and yes okay it does. It does. all right first thing i want to do implement cancel or change the color of the cancel button if we want to 
Uh, so that's gonna be a button. Do we have like a color or something? Uh, style? How do we change the, the color? Style, but the style uses... It uses a button style, so... Button... Style... Background color... Uh, text type background color, yes. It uses a material... Well, it's a color. Okay. Uh, two, two, two. Okay, so... What? Go away. I don't want you to, to keep... What, what, what are you doing here? Oh, it's a uh, it's a tool for using the color materials. Maybe the underscore is too much. Material state property. Material state color dot. Hmm. Mm. Let's go back to the roots. Flutter. Flutter. Set button. Background. Color. How to change the background color of raised button, which is exactly what we want. You, my second timer worked. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Um... Da, da, da. So that's the question, and that's the answer. The answer says uh, style elevated button dot style from primary colors red, colors teal. Uh, it seems that it's what I want. So elevated button dot style from primary colors dot something. Let's have a look. Where is my VS code? It's here. So we were there. Style. Style. Elevated button. Elevated button dot style from. And then primary equals colors dot. Uh, what color should be a cancel button? You say ternary, okay? You say ternary. Uh, it doesn't have ternary. It has primary. It doesn't even have secondary. Oh, primary, okay. Primary equals colors dot... It doesn't have anything. It has primaries. But that's a list of material colors. It was another answer. Okay. Okay, so that's the that's the twitch lag for you. <laughs> uh what color should be a console button? It shouldn't be it shouldn't be um it should uh, i i thought we could use the palette of the theme you know i could i would have used like the the theme color i'm pretty sure we can do that let's have a look at oh it's uh, let's use this colors dot green but how can i get the theme colors because I can do colors that green colors that oh I can't type okay and then that will give me the pop up and then if I use colors that green fifty will that work colors green fifty Uh, yeah, no. Darker, yeah, yeah. Uh, 70. 
seventy looks like it's exactly what I I had I had before. Oh, you mean darker than green accent? Green accent. Let's try green accent. Let's try green accent. Yeah. Why not? It's a little bit light for me, but we can always come back uh, on that. Or I can do that off stream. Uh, the important thing is that we know where to put that and how to do that. So, yeah, we can do that. What what I ultimately want is that is to use the theme color and say okay get the theme primary and then use it as a something else. Okay, uh, color the zero xf. Which one is that? Which one is that? The f f zero zero twenty five fifty nine. Is it somewhere in there? Could be green accent 400 or something, for all we know. Green accent 700. Let's let's try green accent 700, and that's gonna be the last uh, the last uh, thing we try tonight for this button. Yeah, it looks like uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, that's uh, that's where we're gonna put this thing when we figure out how to get the. Theme color. Okay. On console, what we want to do here is pop uh, the state. So we want to call the navigator, navigator dot pop, and then navigator dot pop, void close, navigator pop, context. Uh, okay. And we want to return null. Okay, and then on save, we want to navigate dot pop. So context, but now we want to return the expense. Okay, great. Back to the home screen. When we come back from there, this is an object. And so, if object is not null, then we're going to do something. We're going to do this. And here we can... What did I do? What did I press? Okay. Uh, here we can actually return object. Uh, no, that's the problem. It wants an expense. Actually, can I can I do this? Like, oops. Oh, you said what did you say? Alt, alt and upper. Awesome. Can I do that? And then if yes, I can do that. And then if expense is if is not null, then we set the state with the new, the expense that has returned from there, and then we we return the expense to probably the next uh, element in the chain. It doesn't want that because uh, because because that's is that I think yeah I think that should do it so if we have a, an expense object me, meaning we pressed save and not cancel then we set the state we replace the previous uh, item in the list with the one that came back from uh, from there and then we return that to the next element I guess in the chain uh, and here, when we create uh, when we create an object, <laughs> oh, it was written here. This training comma makes auto formatting nicer for build methods. Huh. Look at that! It was written in the 
in the default tab. Uh, here, so we press that, we have, we sent an empty expense, but then we get an expense maybe back. And so that's an object. And that's this. And we need to expand the expense equals object as expense maybe. And return the expense maybe. Uh, what did I screw up? Uh, missing a then expense of that object. Why is this? Oh, okay. And this is ah, there. We go. There we go. Okay. Um, uh, guessing that no, that that doesn't work. Uh, it's not happy. Expected to find greater than. But why did it work here then? Why did it work here? Oh, yes. That, that takes a function that needs an object. And so now we need to close the parentheses here. And now everything is fine and um, so now if i put a comma in there yeah awesome there you go comma there you go comma here and uh, ding, ding, ding comma here ready okay so what do we do what do we do if expense is not null, then currency is missing in a default. Yes, currency is missing. We need a drop down, I'm guessing, drop down of known currencies. Uh, I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking ahead. Um, right now I need Swiss francs and euros, and I'm okay with the the party uh, the the participant being called me and them because that works for everyone. Um, it's me and them in English. It's gonna be uh, moi et I don't I don't know what I'm going to put for for the French version, and we can translate that and and it's understandable in every language. Uh, so me and them works okay. But then currencies, right now I only need two. But if I go to the UK, then suddenly I will, I will need a third one. If I go to the US, then I might need a fourth one. And if someone downloads my app, maybe they live in Canada and they need US, um, Canadian dollars and US dollars. So... Ideally, uh, the app needs to have a list of known currencies and then present either all of those or just the known ones and an option to add a new one. So if I, yeah, if I go on Mars, for example, we can use Martian francs or Martian euros or Martian dollars. And then, and then, and then we also need later on to uh, query the exchange rate, which means we're going to need a main uh, currency so that we can we can compute or, or uh, get the exchange rate to that currency. So I guess if you were to download the app, you would have euros uh, as the main currency and then you would uh, for example have Swiss francs as, as a second currency and you would have like uh, one and 1.20 francs for one euros whereas I'm going to have the Swiss francs as the main currency and I'm going to have like the euros at 
0.8 Swiss francs. Or is it the other opposite? Well, I, I never know. <laughs> but if, yeah, if I get, no, if I pay one euro, then it's 1.2 Swiss francs. That's going to be the, the exchange rate. Martian yens. Yes. Could be. It could very well be. Um, okay, so we were coding this, that uh, we were coding the thing that if we create a new expense, then we need to add that to the expense list. So expense dot add expense. Expense. There we go. All right, let's try that. Let's press cancel and go to and then it will be bedtime yeah you're right it's uh, half past uh, midnight already so let's click on the milk and then them and then cancel and nothing changed and click on milk them save and they now paid for the milk and let's say that it's uh i don't know uh chocolate Milk. Yes, I do love chocolate. Chocolate milk. Milk. 1.20 francs paid by them. And because it's chocolate milk, milk, it's a lot more expensive. It's 150. Let's save that. 150. It seems to be working. Now, let's click on plus and I will pay for a croissant. And a croissant, or a croissant, as I said uh, correctly the first time around, is uh, for whatever currency it's going to be. It doesn't work because I forgot to say set state. And so the state hasn't been updated. And so the app doesn't know that it has to redraw everything uh, that's that that goes here that goes here and save that and now we have the croissant because it has the, the thing has been updated let's add another thing they will pay for a brioche because we like brioche and then select all and that's gonna cost them like 35 francs because it's like a huge brioche does work it does work and we did say croissant emoji does it work that's a very good question how do i get the emojis uh, from there i need the emojis and do we have a croissant emojis we do so let's do that and also remove the no don't change the keyboard you moron it's my stream i can do whatever i want i can say whatever i want <laughs> them are going to pay uh a croissant for five francs save Ta -da! Oh, you ninja you uh you have won a ban uh, how do I ban you like that? Ban. Bye. I'm I'm actually quite happy that uh, bots and spammers think I'm uh, worthy of uh, of their presence. But ta-da! Cross on emoji. It did work. Well, that's that's um, that's good. That's good. We need the currency. We also need some kind of validation. Because if the title is empty, we shouldn't be able to save that. So, uh, what what if I press the back button? Ah, we have a way to come back. I, I've lost my earbud. So we have a way to come back. What does that do? If I then change uh, this and then press OK and then press the back button on the phone so that's the the little arrow you can see next to me on the screen well that only comes back so that that unpops the 
that unpops the uh, the view. I am curious now. I am curious as to what does it bring back. Uh, then here. So if I press cookies and then back from here. It either doesn't work or it's not how to do that thing. So if I press cancel now. It doesn't debug anything. But how can it be a console press? Because I only have a button. I don't have a button that says it's a console button. Also, that didn't debug anything. That I'm, I'm, I am disappointed that it did not stop in the debugger. Did I start with debugger? Debug, run and debug. I might need a a configuration to actually start the debugger. Anyways, um, combo for the currency. Combo for the cur the currency. How do I do a combo for the currency? Uh, dun, 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 dun. I will need something around here. A, com um, a drop down, not a combo. It's going to be a drop down something. So if I press plus, ah, I need it to restart. So now I'm in the, in the debugger. So I can keep on doing my stuff. And then if I come back, uh, it's sent null. Okay. So it just pops and sends null, which is fortunate because we have uh, a use case for that. And then if I press on that and I press cancel, uh, so I pressed cancel, it sent null, but that's because I said that I wanted null. But if I do that and I come back, it also sends null. Right, okay. So it just pops the, um, the current state and returns null. Uh, I was thinking, not a dropdown with all the currencies, just the currencies currently in use in the app. And then an option to say, okay, I want, I now want the app to also use that currency. Because if we have a combo with like a gazillion currencies here, it doesn't mean anything. What we want is, you know, if we use French francs, French, Swiss francs, Swiss francs and euros mainly I want to see only those store in settings later yes yes have a, a settings panel and say okay here's the currencies I use French francs euros that's the main one the, so that's the one we're going to compute the uh, exchange rate ex exchange rate against and then have a web service probably the, I'm pretty sure those things exist so web service web service uh currency exchange exchange rates api there we go is it free yes it's free oh 250 monthly requests yeah that might be well, to be fair, I think my app will only be downloaded by me and maybe my mom. And then my mom won't use it. So I'm pretty sure 250 monthly requests is okay. I don't intend to call this API every single time I display the currency. I think I'm going to have a button somewhere that says, okay, now go fetch the the exchange, uh, the exchange rate. And I can maybe limit that to um, what I need is a, a, that same uh, API. Actually, um, web service currency exchange Swiss confederation. They often have free services like that. 
XML version. And there you have it. I knew... I knew the Swiss Confederation had something. They have like tons of data like that. And, and they offer that for free. So how many... How many currencies do we have? Euros, USD, the Egyptian something. I don't know how it's called. And, you know, see, because we're in Switzerland, of course, they give us the name of the currency in three language. Eha! <laughs> Not that I need that, but... So that's the... The thing, so one USD is zero point... Ah, but that's... No, that's the conversion for Swiss francs only. You can't say, okay, I want one USD for one euro. Although I can, I guess I could, I could go like, okay, if one euro is 1.0877 Swiss francs and one USD is 0 0.9233 Swiss francs, then that gives one uh, X USDs for one euros or x euros for one usd but no that's not what i want that's not what i want i want something that is exchange rates web service convert to euro convert to foreign currency converter to euro to foreign get current exchange rate method returns current specified exchange rate for the specified bank and currency uh not what i want uh wait wait where do we want no we don't want that we, we want another one well right. anyway that's not the <laughs> the point right now right now i want to have a drop down with two currencies which are swiss francs and euros and we'll fix the these things later on another stream so how do we do Combo or drop down, flutter drop down, flutter drop down, drop down button class. Uh, is it what I want? Is it what I want or is it not? Uh, it seems to be exactly what I want. So, how do we implement that? Uh, it's a drop down of something and it has a value, uh, a style maybe, uh, an unchange and items. Right, right. Let's uh, let's do that. Star, star, star. Did you try to post a link? Actually, let me do something. So. Uh, that, and, and, how do I do that? I can't do that from here. Uh, I don't want to ban you. I don't want to time you out. Uh, let's click here. What does that do? No, that opens a, that opens another thing that I don't want. I thought I would be able to do something right from here. Uh, I don't know. Then I need to go to... I need to go to my Twitch.tv and I need to go to what my... Uh, uh, create of something, community, role manager, add... Uh, let's see. I don't want to mistype your your name. A C D H I R R A C D H I R R. There you go. Is that you? With the face? Yes, I think it. I think that's you. I have to check. Make sure. I don't want to do something with some weird random people. 
Yes, that's you. So I say you here are a moderator. There you go. You can uh, you should be able to post links now. You should be able to post links and also kick boats and people who are not very nice. But you can't kick people who don't speak French. I'm sorry. You have to let them in. Uh, okay, combo, 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 combo. Uh, that was uh, that. That was drop down button of a string. And which is exactly what I want, actually. So, um, ding, 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 ding. Uh, that's in the form, and I had a text field, and I have the set, and that the row is the button, so I need to put that somewhere here. Below the size box, let's have a drop down button of string, and then we're gonna need another side box probably. And I probably also need a text in front of that, well, not in front, but on top of that. And the text is gonna be currency, currency. I yeah, I'm gonna write widget because those texts with the style and the text style that says uh, text style style here and later spacing two. I do that all the time, and prob that probably means I need a widget for that. Uh, missing comma here and what? What is missing? Strut style? No, that's not strut style. That's just style. Okay. This needs an items property. Okay. And so the items are going to be right now CHF and CHF and EUR. Right. Uh, it doesn't like that because because items are a list of drop-down menu item of string. Okay, okay. Um, so that's, we, we need to map that to drop-down menu item of string. Map. So we need to get that and map that to drop-down menu item. And the, I guess it's a text. Uh, yes, the child is a text, so we have a child, which is going to be a text, and the value of this text is going to be E, and then the value of that combo is also E. And then save that, and everything is more or less okay, because that's the... that's that... Uh, the blue one is this one, and then I need... Uh, what's wrong? The argument type iterable of download item menu of string cannot be assigned to list of drop down menu of Oh, to list. To list. Map to list. There we go. To list. And comma and comma. No. What? What? Oh, those are not properties, those are uh, function calls. Okay, great. Uh, we're good. We're good. We're good. And we have a currency here. And it doesn't pop. It doesn't pop. Well, you are welcome. You are someone who speaks properly uses complete fra phrases speaks english when ju it's just you and me in the chat when we know that we both speak french and uh and i can always uh remove your uh, mod privileges if <laughs> if you happen to be a a hole <laughs> so, you know, with great power comes great responsibilities. So now you are, you have great responsibilities. Uh, okay, um, what is go <clears throat> what is going on? So why why doesn't that open? Maybe it doesn't have a value. Maybe that's why. 
I don't know. We have an uh, we have items. So let's go back to here. We uh, we have what uh, value? Okay, value. Value. Okay, value is the initial value. Right. Okay, the value is expense expense dot currency. Okay, uh, on change on change <clears throat> on changed. Uh, we're gonna have something, and uh, we need a string here. So that's value, value, and then we do something like expand, oops, set state, and then we say expense dot currency equals value. There we go. Uh, it doesn't like that because currency cannot be null and value can be null. So we go if. Huh. I can't do that because value can be null. Can it? It probably cannot, but it doesn't hurt to say if value is not null, then. Which is exactly the same as we al already said. No, that's that's that was the opposite. That was if we had something new here, we could say uh, uh, question mark, and then it would. But but now that's just value that can be null, and I I don't want to say value exclamation mark. <laughs> yes, a super motto. Da -da -da. This, this, not this one. Uh, da -da -da. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Uh, did that change something? Well, that changed the uh, initial value, and then I can change euros, and then I can save, and then which one was that? I don't remember. But now they're all euros. No, milk. Milk is switch francs. I switch to euros, and I say save, and now it switched to euros, and I come back and switch to Swiss francs, and say yeah, and it works. It's working. It's perfect, except. It's not expanded. So we're going to expand that. Expanded. Expanded. It's not. Is it expanded like that? Or is it expanded like. Uh, I've removed all the expanded? Why did I do that? X. X. Expanded. Expanded. And expanded takes a child, and the child is the drop down. I'm <laughs> okay. I did it again. Oops, I did it again. Drop down, click on the thingy, and wrap with widget, and then expand. Because that's like hundred thousand times easier. The lighter button could be for the save button. And why is it all the way down there now? I didn't notice that earlier. Is it because of the expanded that I just added? Or the drop down? Since when? Oh. What? What? Oh, if I want if I want it to be expanded, I need a a row. I need a row and then expand that. So so I need to wrap that into an expanded, and then I need to wrap the expanded into a row. Uh. The name parameter should not define. Uh, that's children. And then, can I like get that? Um, no. No. It doesn't have the option like make a make a one item array. <laughs> 
Okay, so there's that's here, that's here. Okay, and now and now it is working. Yeehaw! Except the uh, the uh, under the, the underline is uh, is lighter, but uh, Menex is that max. You say what you're saying is that I should do something like main axis size main axis size dot max is that what you're saying and so i don't need expanded then <clears throat> is there a refactor for that remove this widget no i don't want to remove this widget I, I will i want to unwrap it but that doesn't oh remove this widget okay remove this widget then we have discovered something new. Again. No, didn't work. It didn't work. It's, it's still the uh, teeny tiny little currency selector. Yeah, no problem. We're here to, we are here to learn. How can we know that it's not the way to do things if we're not doing things like that and then realize it's not the way we do it? I'm getting tired. I'm saying about pretty much no um, stupid things. All right. So we have a form. We're going to stop there because we have made a good progress. We have now a form that is actually working. Uh, we can save or cancel, which is something good. I, I think. Um, I'm going to have to read on material uh, material design and see how they do things. Because some, I know there are guidelines um, for that. And uh, yeah, so we have that and we can add new new stuff. So if I go there and we add new... Oh, what's going on with the currency? It doesn't like that. 50 euros. Oh no, that's not the currency. The bottom overflowed by 8 pixels. Oh, that's the debug thing, uh, I guess. Yeah, it overflowed because of the uh, of the keyboard. And then I can save that and we have new stuff in there. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, you know what? I'm pretty happy with what we have now. I'm going to stop right here and... Uh, Call it tonight. Go to go to bed. Gotta work tomorrow. Thank you, Akdir, for joining me. You need to wrap it in a single child view. All right. Uh, wrap wrap what? Uh, the whole the whole main uh, main main app or something. I'm gonna have to read about that single child view. All the all of the screen. So so the the form here. Uh, it is a it is a form so what you're seeing is that I need to wrap that into a single child view scroll view is that what you meant single side single side scroll single child scroll view damn it and there's only one child, it's the form. And so now what you're saying is that if I go and click plus and then open the keyboard, it's not going to complain. <gasps> oh my God. Sir, you are a genius. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh, it does. Uh, it does. Uh, can I can I lock that on an Android phone? I don't know. Can I lock the... Hmm, maybe. I'm gonna have to find that. Oh, I've closed my phone. Yeah, great. I guess it's a sign. It's a sign that we need to stop now. So, thank you, Agdir, for joining the stream and, and teaching me lots of stuff. I hope you got something out of this stream, too. Uh, I know I did. Uh, just the comma thing that, that formats the whole 
the whole code. That's that's genius. And the scroll, single scroll, single side, uh, single child scroll you. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you, Monica. I don't know if you're still there. If you are, great. If you are not, well, uh, you will maybe uh, catch the uh, replay. Uh, yes, we don't. Let's go back to the chat. One moment. We do learn uh, from each other, and that is great. Uh, that's uh, that's why I do those things. Um, I want to learn stuff, so I learn myself, and I, I learn by myself, and I learn with the people in the chat. Tell a friend, uh, tell your family, tell your dog. <laughs> I don't know if you have a dog. Uh, I would really like to go to get to affiliate one day, and uh, the only way to get there is to uh, have people in the chat. Um, I think it's 50 subscribers, uh, 50 followers, and uh, at least um, an average an average of three people in the chat per stream uh, for the last 30 something days. So uh, yeah, hopefully I can make that one day, fingers crossed. If not, well, it's okay. Uh, it's okay like it is like right now. Uh, let's see, do we have someone to read? So we can read uh, the both of us, we can read someone and then say goodbye. <laughs> that would be great. Uh, let's see. Let's go to my channel, see who is live. Do I know someone live right now? Uh, do I know someone who is live? Yes, yes. Uh, Chris. Chris Tellier is an awesome mu musician. So if I copy that and... I think if I type slash red in my chat, we're going to be... When will I be streaming next time? Well, that is a very good question. Uh, maybe tomorrow night. Not sure about that. Not this weekend because I'm not there. Uh, well, I'm I'm there Saturday. So one one evening, either tomorrow or Saturday. I'm not there Sunday, so I'm not gonna stream Sunday. Monday, I'm going to come back home late, so I'm probably not gonna do that. Tuesday, I will stream on the Ubuntu On Air channel. I will stream part two of my setting up your uh, PHP slash Angular on the development environment. We're going to finish the PHP environment and then go to the Angular one and then bridge the, the two together so we can call a web service from our Angular uh, side to the PHP side. So that's on twitch.tv slash Ubuntu On Air. Um, probably not going to stream anything else on Tuesday, uh, I don't think. Uh, Wednesday, um, I no, probably not Wednesday, but definitely ne next Thursday. So once this weekend, either, either uh, tomorrow or uh, Saturday, and next Thursday, and Tuesday on the Ubuntu on their channel. And oh, next, next... Thursday, it's also Maker's Corner recordings on this channel. I record Maker's Corner, a DIY tech podcast with my friend Nate. So you will be you will be notified uh, if you follow me on this channel. Uh, we we record there. We don't have a dedicated channel for that. So yeah, you're gonna have a lot of me this uh, this next this next week and maybe this week too. Okay, so let's go and read Chris. And just say hello, and then it's gonna be time to go to bed. So I think it's slash red, and then the name of the person I want to read. I think. Do I have to put an at in front of that? I don't know. Let's try. Let's do that. Yay! So we are going to read in six seconds. So everybody, thank you for joining, and see you soon. Bye bye.